Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to this webinar. We are just going to wait maybe one or two mi more minutes um, to see if more people are coming, and then we're going to kick it off. I can see that more people are joining. That's awesome. Uh, just a few more minutes, um, maybe one or two, and then we're going to kick it off. Okay, I can see that the number of participants is fairly stable, so let's go. Good morning, everyone. Very welcome to this uh, webinar together with uh, Begonia Della Mata uh, to the, for the topic of how to be successful as a female entrepreneur, which I think is an incredibly important topic. And I'm really, really honored uh, to have Begonia together with me here today um, so that we can discuss uh, what it takes and why it's also relevant. Uh, hi, Begonia. Hi, Matthias, Matze, good morning. good morning to everybody. And uh, thank you so much for having me here today and for yeah, your invitation to have this talk together. It's a pleasure being with you here today, Matze. Yeah, thank you for being here. And just for to give everyone a very rough agenda um, for today, how we're going to run this. Um, so we're going to introduce ourselves very quickly so that you know who your hosts are for today. And then uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the topic. Why is this topic actually a relevant topic? We're going to look at some data, but then we're really going to dive into it, kind of like what's special about uh, female international entrepreneurs and what are some difficulties, what are some, stre uh, some strengths, but I also want to talk about some uh, examples um, of uh, really successful female entrepreneurs with an international background so that hopefully you're going to go home inspired and can take something away this, uh, from this conversation that is relevant for you. Awesome. Begonia, do you want to introduce yourself quickly? Yes, sure. So um, I am also an international female founder. I come from Spain. I have been in Germany for the last 25 years living and working. And in 2006, I decided uh, to start a new path in my professional life. And I founded um, Fraunalia, which is a social company in which we try to support uh, or yeah, um, um, more diversity in our society and economy. And in order to reach that big vision, we support um, international migrant women, international women on their way, on their professional path, on their professional way here in Germany, either as an employee or either as founder. <clears throat> so that's why um, founding a business and entrepreneurship is a big uh, a pillar of our company. And in the framework of the work of Raunalia, we got to know also other companies in Germany, which were also working with the same target group, uh, either male or migrant founders, male and female. And through the experience and know-how which we gathered in this uh, network of organizations, then we decided in 2021 <clears throat> to create or to, to offer the first um, national summit for international female founders because we had, um, we, our view was that uh, through the support which we have through the German system here, it's very much regional. So the people in, in Berlin are by themselves, the people in Hamburg by themselves, the people in Hessen by themselves, and we could not see any national uh, umbrella which 
could bring all these international female founders together. So that uh, brought us to the idea of um, offering this first summit for international female founders in 21. And the feedback was uh, immense positive. So uh, that uh, brought us to the next step uh, because many women who told, they told us in their feedback, it could not be only one summit, we need more because uh, maybe not living in Berlin, Frankfurt, or Hamburg, there are many, many places in Germany where the target group uh, don't have access to any kind of support, either in community, uh, consulting, and whatever. So, yeah, so then uh, we got, we gathered seven bold people who decided to found uh, Sigrundet, the Verband Internationale Entrepreneurinnen in 2022. And yeah, we have been running now for the last uh, two years, and we are very much happy to have the support of the um, National Commissioner for Integration, Migration, and Refugees. And uh, based on that, based on that support which uh, we have, we could launch in 23 uh, one project which is called Stage for um, International Fempreneurs, and. Uh, Exactly. Thank you for sharing the website, Matze. And if, maybe if you go to the community, then I can show you one of the main pillars of our project, which is a digital platform to make possible for international female founders to connect um, nationwide. Um, very I, cool. I, yeah, very cool. And I... Um, I was part of the last summit uh, that took, been, uh, took place in Berlin, and it was such a, such an amazing experience. Uh, so much positive energy um, in that room, and uh, just also the level of uh, or the quality, like the the uh, thoroughness of the thinking of the people, was absolutely amazing. So it was uh, truly inspiring to be part uh, part of that um, experience. So thanks again for the invitation, and like so much, there's so much value that this community brings. But we're going to be touching on community. Um, on a little bit later. Um, my name is Matthias. Everyone calls me Matze. I'm the CEO um, and one of the founders of a company called uh, Jimdo. Uh, we provide, we started out as a website builder, um, but since 2017, 18, we have really started to focus in on digital products for self-employed. Um, the main thing is here, one, two, three people companies really. Um, and we offer a much broader variety of products than just websites. So for example, the text generator, a booking system, an online store, um, integration with AdWords so that you can get found, integration with socials um, so you can uh, build up your social community there as well. So really trying to um, do a good job of empowering um, the self-employed. And within that kind of like, I, I have a very, very big love for the segment of the self-employed. Um, and I have uh, I have a lot of um, interactions with this uh, community and I just love it. It's absolutely amazing. But the, the group of the people with an international background have a special place in my heart um, because it's like the, the things that they need to deal with here in Germany um, is just next level. And uh, we're going to be touching on that uh, in a little bit as well. So I'm uh, super happy that we can support them, uh, can, can support this group here um, with this webinar as well. As a little bit of housekeeping for everyone, all of the participants, um, you are very um, free to um, ask any kind of questions also in between. We have Tim here uh, from our team that will help uh, to answer them. We will also have a Q&A session um, in the end where we can go through your questions. If you want to ask them, um, it would be great to use um, the F and A functionality here in Zoom. Uh, if you use a German browser, if you are a German system, if you use an English system, it's called Q&A. That will make it easier for us to administrate them um, in the end. Um, okay, now, um, Begania, maybe let's start and look at the data, um, because I think that's always a good place to, uh, to get rooted in, in where we are and uh, what that really means. And I think it's actually really interesting data that um, one of your co-founders uh, of, uh, of the network has generated together with uh, the Status and the Battlesman Stiftung. I'm just going to pull it up very quickly. Um, Second, I need to find the right window 
here it is. So the slides are in German, but we'll translate them. Um, and uh, maybe I can take this one first, um, which says basically Germany is not a land of the self-employed, not a country of the self-employed. And that is unfortunately very, very true. Um, what you see here is kind of like how many of the people in Germany are basically um, self-employed. And as you can see in the uh, European comparison, it's like we're we're far behind. We're definitely um, a country where employment with a bigger company is the normal status quo. Um, and uh, that is, I think, unfortunate because there's so much to uh, this model of being um, self-employed. But Begonia, maybe you can take the next one because there's one group that is clearly growing also over time. Exactly. And um, that's the group um, of um, migrant founders. So if we compare here, there is, it says that there is one group uh, which is growing um, against the trend which we see in the German market, because um, here we can see the numbers of um, self-employed um, without and with migrant background. And then we can see how the number has been growing since 2011 gradually, while at the same time, the number of uh, German self-employed um, had decreased. And um, of course, as you say, Mate, there are different reasons for that. It's not random, or it's not that, uh, let's say, German uh, people are less bold than non-German people, than is the reason, but we had a very good um, uh, labor market situation in the last years. And maybe Germany is a country which tend to have the security of working on a, a, a middle company or in a big company instead of taking the risk of funding their own business. Yeah. And even if, oh, sorry. And if we look at um, this slide, so this is basically the, the percentage, right? It's going up from 15% to 24%, which is pretty impressive. Um, but there is a there is a group that is even growing uh, growing growing faster than that. Exactly, and even if within the group of the migrant founders, then um, the group of female founders um, has even growth quicker than the male uh, migrant founders. So that we can see, um, since two thousand five uh, until two thousand twenty three the rate increased in 83 percent which is amazing which is amazing. absolutely absolutely impressive um and i think it's uh like if you are a, a female a person that is thinking about starting your own thing you're not alone you're part of a bigger trend which is amazing, yeah. it's amazing <laughs> and it's very much empowering to see for I exactly think women, maybe who are attending our webinar or would have the chance maybe to uh, watch it later on to see that okay i am not alone i don't have a crazy idea of wanting maybe to found my business here in germany there are other three thousand five three uh, three hundred five thousand women like me who already made that step and are on the market yeah so there is a trend and that's why as you said uh, in the introduction match that's why we are speaking about this group today here because it looks like um it has a uh, quite a future in in our country in our economy yeah very cool and if we dive into it it's like why why do people with an international background start their own company what are you seeing yeah there are different reasons and um many okay i don't want to stereotype but there is a certain part of our society who tend to think that maybe migrant founders um, decide to be self-employed here in Germany because they have no other option. No? So it's a kind of need to survive and get in a kind of self-employed income. Yeah? And basically, of course, yeah, there are people um, that are motivated to be self-employed, to found a business because they have no other option here in Germany. But what we have seen since uh, 2006, um, um, either um, by Fraunalia, at Fraunalia, and also in the last year with Sigrunded, is as most of the female founders which we have been supported, they don't found because of any kind of need. They found because um, they want 
to have their own project in their life. And in many cases, the migration process also opened up their mind and the perspective of many women. And in, in the framework of the migration integration in another society, then we also adjust our identity. Yeah? So in the process of adjusting our identity to the new society and to the new market in which we live, we also discover maybe skills or wishes which we had in our country. For example, I am a lawyer. <laughs> if I would have stayed in, in, in Spain, I would have never <laughs> thought of funding my business or anything like that. I don't come, I come from a family where everybody was employed and were working all their lives at the same company. And they went on pension after 40 years working for a big company. And the main, my, all my friends from the university follow this path. Yeah. So what I want to say is that I don't come from also a culture which entrepreneurship is on trend because you also tend to go to a secure or a, um, I mean, labor situation. But the migration also helped me to um, find out maybe other part of my personality and um, yeah, and trust certain skills and then uh, taking the path. And this is what I observe also in many, many, many women. So basically what you're saying, and this is super interesting, is that the migration process by itself, kind of like you're in a new environment, you're in a new culture, everything is new. It opens up your mind also about your potential path and what, what could be possible for you in your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. I, yeah, absolutely. And you know what, Matthias, I always tend to say to the, uh, with the, to the woman with whom we work is that migration, the migration process itself, as itself, it's a kind of also entrepreneurship. Yeah, it's starting something new in a new country. You have to develop. You are every day at the beginning, like a um, challenge with so many or face, you have to face so many challenges yeah, on this integration process. Yeah, both at the personal and uh, professional level. So I said the integration process in Germany is such a good training or being later on a founder. Yeah, because you have to develop, you have to develop many personal skills. Yeah, like That's very true. resilience, uh, the capacity to adjust to other circumstances. And these are top skills which we need as a founder. So that's that's pretty that's pretty amazing and super inspiring. Uh, the thing, so it's like <laughs> maybe there is some good in the in the next level German bureaucracy is kind of like it teaches you at least for sure resilience and uh, attention to detail and flexibility and setbacks and everything. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. But but it's like there. I mean, then taking the next step on kind of like okay, I'm gonna do this now in a in a foreign culture. I often often these people do not speak German right as their first language so they're also doing the, the language training and then saying okay I'm also going to jump into this jungle of entrepreneurship um, and also bureaucracy and taxes right as like I mean the devil the taxman um, I'm going to take it up with that one as well it's like what's like the level of courage that these people are bringing to the table is just absolutely amazing it's amazing it is amazing yeah. And that is really, you think kind of like the main driver for this, of, of doing this is the purpose of personal growth, taking on their own project Absolutely. and, and just see, see where, where it takes them. Absolutely. Yes. We need to consider uh, Matt said that in a great part, I, I don't have numbers. I don't think we have, there are even official numbers of that, but um, let's say a large part of the um, migration, which we received in Germany in the last day, in the last years is are migrants which come with academic uh, title and with, um, I mean, they are people who are very good. They have a very good education. They bring also labor experience in their countries or in third countries. So there is a potential which we have in our economy, in our society. Yeah. So, um, so they want people that they want, especially with the women, said I invested so much time on my life studying at the university working already I don't know for how many years in, in, in how many countries or in my country only I don't want to come to Germany and become only either a housewife or uh, you know or not having a personal a professional perspective 
because they are professional women and they want to develop their professional career. And when they see that, okay, for different reasons, yeah? So maybe I was employed and I, maybe uh, I would like to keep working as employed here. And then you see, okay, uh, we have many women who said that also as a migrant woman, after working many years in German company, they reach the glass ceiling. And they said that even as a woman, I mean, you know, that we have the ceiling above us being migrant, the ceiling is even lower. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So many women, after maybe having worked in a German company of, uh, for 10 years, they see, they reach that glass in and they cannot keep developing themselves. Yeah. So that's also motivation for many of them or the trigger to say, okay, now I want to develop my own project and keep growing professionally, but not as employee, but as a self-employed and founding my business. Uh, yeah, it. I mean, it makes sense on so many different levels to take the life into your own hands and, and just go, right? And it's like, and I think the good news about Germany is that you can also start your international business from Germany, right? It's like, I mean, also with Jim, though, we internationalized very, very early on. And that is like, I mean, the German market is a good market to start out, um, but it's always, it's also not like a huge, huge market, right? So we are in Europe, we can leverage like um, the European union um we can go wherever we feel kind of like we need to go so i think from that perspective it's not it's actually pre, it's actually pretty good yeah i for example two days ago uh, we had an event and i met a lady from colombia she had her company there she moved to um, germany one year ago she already had um her um Uge, it's a kind of capital uh, company here in germany yeah. And um, she's making, she developed a platform for data research. Her clients are in US and in Latin America. So she's offering their business from here yeah. still to the clients there, but with a perspective to also reach German and European clients in the future. So it's yeah. a perfect. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, for mm -hmm. that, it's really, it's really good. Um, okay, very cool. I do want to kind of like take it a, like one level um, deeper on taking it more on on the individual level of of the people. So when like one of the things that inspired me very very deeply when I was at your event was what you already mentioned is the entrepreneurial skill set that these people have is incredibly inspiring. And it's like, and the, the things that you also mentioned about the level of resiliency that these um, that um, this group has is absolutely fascinating. Um, and we both know it's like it's one of the core things that you that you need to be um, a successful entrepreneur, right? What other personal traits do you see in this group that really benefit um, them in in their entrepreneurial career besides resiliency? Besides resilience. Yeah. Okay. What I see is that <clears throat> being here, um, as I said, the whole migration and integration process, which we go through, yeah. to open up your mind, yeah, yeah. and uh, your uh, let's say availability to, uh, yeah, handle and negotiate with different cultures, which is I think in our current day is a uh, um, um, yeah. It's a skill because many of them found their business as a sample, what I said now, from the very beginning on an international level. So you have the capacity to uh, deal with different cultures and uh, at the same time. Many of them bring their uh, know-how yeah, in other markets. Yeah? So also give you another perspective when you start your own business here, yeah? because you don't start from zero, and this is all the case, which I see also in many cases, yeah? It's not that you start with zero. You start already with a huge, I say, backpack, which you bring from uh, hard skills and soft skills, which you have developing also, not only through the migration process, but through your professional life, yeah? And um, the third thing I would say is flexibility, yeah? Yeah, it's connected to resilience, but I see, um, yeah, I don't like I, I don't like stereotyping things. Yeah, but <laughs> I think that one uh, common issue maybe in the German culture is that um, everything has an order. Yeah, and it's hard to come out of this order when it's in a 
box, no? Especially the ones who are um, in service areas, no? I always said you have a big asset because the flexibility, yeah, which we maybe you have, yeah, um, to a client is a huge asset. I mean, I think everybody likes to get flexibility as a, I mean, as a customer, yeah, and um, this. I always point out as an asset which they bring uh, because I mean it has another value in your value proposition. Yeah, when you say, okay, I can adjust to the need. Well, I don't want to mean that you have to reduce your price or to uh, make compromise on your offer, but this capacity to adjust on a personal way to the needs of your client for me is an asset when you are on the market. Very, very cool. It's like I completely agree to everything that you said. Maybe I can add like two more of what I said, mainly through at your event, um, which is um, the the level of or maybe doubling down on one one of them that you said is um, I think the level of creativity that they bring because of the diversity, right? That's kind of like um, it goes end in end also with what you said about flexibility, which which I also agree with. The second thing is like um, that I would like to add is um, level of gratefulness of kind of like the, it's like, okay, I'm not taking everything for granted as I think we are kind of like used to in in, in the German culture here. It's like, that's not what I'm seeing uh, with the international ent entrepreneurs and the, the drive of wanting to make it happen, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, it's, it's like, okay, it's like, I'm setting myself on this path. I really want to get it done. And that kind of like triggers and that kind of like impairing with the resiliency is incredibly strong so i think that's a that's that's another one um that i'm seeing this which is really really cool absolutely what what are the like i mean but now going into the challenges there there are a lot of challenges that these people uh, face right when they mm -hmm. get started what do you what do you see yeah and um, basically as you mentioned before the bureaucracy and the german system as chat as, uh, as such is a huge challenge i think that also for uh, German self-employed, no, because um, yeah, it's a jungle and which you are entering. I mean, you don't know how you are going to get out and survive there. So for people who are not, uh, I mean, who didn't grow up in, in in this country and they don't know the system and they don't know the language, so even getting getting a letter from uh, the Finanzamt or going to the Gewerbeamt is already a huge step. Yeah, so this is clear that bureaucracy is a huge challenge. Another challenge, uh, uh, Matthew, I would say, is um, the language. Yeah? And maybe uh, not very much for themselves, but for the perception from the German uh, society. And it was funny because last week, you know, two weeks ago, I had an interview. And then I pointed out this uh, subject. And the journalist said, ah, it's funny because last month I interviewed two founders uh, here in Berlin. They have a very nice company. They are coming from Iran and Iraq, and they pointed out exactly the same uh, issue, which you are mentioning now. And it's the fact that it is uh, from the society, it's uh, expected that we speak perfect German. And in many times, not speaking a perfect German is a kind of, um, I would say like, um, tool or way to measure yeah what we can offer and what we can do yeah so this is a real challenge so that's why we always work with our women and say okay the, the fact that German is a difficult language is there yeah so we cannot avoid that and every I mean unless you uh, grow up in the country and you are in the second generation or you went maybe to a, a German school in your own country coming here and um, uh, learning uh, the language as an adult, it's a challenge and it remains a challenge for many years. So that, that's why we always encourage uh, our um, founders not to put so much focus on that, but put the focus on other skills which they have. Yeah? And, um, and the third one, uh, it is exactly the same, uh, subject which you were presented at the at the summit and it's how you call it entrepreneurial muscle you know? because um, I think we agree on that that maybe one of the biggest challenge with self-employed 
have to uh, tackle is um, trusting themselves and believing on their own um, um, strength and um, having this self-esteem. And um, when you are a migrant and uh, a woman, it is uh, at the beginning harder to uh, overcome this challenge. Because as I said, you come here, you don't know anybody, you don't know the language, um, you feel many times that people don't understand you and you think, okay, if people don't understand because of my accent, how I am going to be successful with the business, yeah? I don't have a network here. And um, that's why um, yeah, believing in your own self and trusting yourself and uh, it's, the I would say it's a, um, yeah, for me, it's a huge or that the largest challenge which we face were in, with our women, with our female founders. And this challenge has to do a lot also with not having a community and not having a network of people who support you or that you know at the beginning. Because uh, even, I don't know how was your experience, Matze, but you, I think that you were you know, found in Jimdo with two colleagues from the university. So even for you was, of course, an adventure, yeah, to jump into this world but you have your network, you have your colleagues from the university and then people already knew you. So you said you are, at, from that per perspective, you were not starting from zero, you had something there. Yeah. And not having this community, not having a network makes even more difficult to trust and believe in yourself. Yeah? That's why also one of the missions of a Sig Rundet is exactly that, yeah, to support and to create this community of international female founders and make it possible for them to uh, network and connect not only between themselves, but also, also with other community, like the community which you are, uh, and Jimdo is building up now, Jimdo community, because uh, our approach is also that um, yeah, as maybe as international migrant female founders, we have, um, as we were speaking, um, special, I would say special, maybe other challenges, yeah, we, we have to face, but um, our approach is not remaining only within our target group, yeah, is to create bridges, yeah, to the German society community and especially to the German community of founders here. So that's why I'm very much happy that also our community have the possibility to connect uh, with the community which you are building at Jindu. Um, Very cool. Yeah, that would have been my question and you already answered is kind of like, how do you overcome these challenges, right? And I think like the what like self-employed people generally are basically pretty alone, right? Because they don't have any anyone that they can rely on, like friends and family want to be helpful, but it's like often they, they can't, right? They can... They, they try to give advice, but they know even less than you, right? Because it was the same in my family. My, my dad was like, I'm not coming yeah, from, an, uh, you know, I'm not coming from a business uh, family. My, uh, my, my, both my parents worked in, in, in corporates or for universities. And so they had some very valuable general advice, but when it comes to some tactical advice, it was like, uh, I, I couldn't ask them. Um, and uh, you have to kind of like build the best way to do it, right? Is to have a peer network um, of people that you can go to. And it's like um, connecting these people that are in the same phase with people that have done it, um, that are supportive, that understand what, what, it, what it feels like, right? Not only from kind of like a knowledge perspective, but also from an emotional perspective. What does it feel like if you run into a challenge? What does this person need, um, right? Um, is, is, is truly amazing. Um, and I'm like, and it's the the thing that I think is specifically true for um, the international female community, right? If you look at the numbers, um, that's the encouraging piece, right? It's a growing, it's a growing community. It's a growing community that you can rely on, um, and you you probably have more people that are starting out at the same time that anyone had before you. So it's also a really great asset that you uh, that you can rely on in, in in having that. Absolutely, because you have a community where you can always go there and ask questions and say how you did that. I am facing this problem. Anybody has experience on that? So you don't have the feeling that you are going through this process by yourself. You have a group of people who are supporting uh, you, giving their advice and sharing their knowledge uh, from their own experience here. Yeah. Yep. So this is 
I mean, for us is an immense uh, value which we can offer and which we want to offer. Yeah, because as yeah. I said before, I mean, big cities we know that there are many projects supporting uh, the female founders. Yeah, uh, I mean, with mentoring programs and coachings, but there are many, many places in Germany where they don't have the possibility to go to any kind of uh, project or uh, consulting uh, um, institution which support them on that. So yeah. even finding out which one is the competent let's say get very amped in your case you don't know how to do it yeah so no, you can exactly. do it but you are yeah. not sure if you are doing the right thing yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's only yeah. a question of, as you said it's not only a question of getting the information but also on the emotional level also supporting each other yeah and and the the thing is it's like the what i experience in this general community and that is um, I think true for for everyone who's basically self-employed in Germany. Not not that's not exclusive to the migrant, um, the people with a migrant background. Is everybody is very value driven, right? So it's like the level of trust that you can bring to these people is like it's is is I think very high. And so, um, and I think this is like you're you're doing that for sure, and your community or your community members are doing it. They basically almost take like a role of a guide right it's like as a as a whole right not there may be an individual person who may, may be bought more bought in but you can go to different persons um and ask the right experts um basically in that group and you can be pretty reliant on that they are um that they have a good that, that they have a great belief in you right so it's not only that they mean well but they have a great belief in you and want to be supportive because you know they they were at the same place um before already and so that's extremely helpful absolutely absolutely do you maybe have like a like um, well i know you have but uh have like a great uh, example of somebody who who is doing who went through the process and maybe had some challenges and um and is and is and is doing great now <laughs> we have many cases <laughs> Uh, maybe I would like to mention you one lady which we have in our accelerator program in Fraunali at the moment. She comes uh, from Prague. She's an architect. Yeah? She came to Germany and uh, she was working as an architect uh, for many years. And at the architect studio at which she was working, she got um, um, <clears throat> um, one new client and um, she had to create a new concept for an old knipe, yeah, which was at the um, um, yeah, well, was was at the site of a cemetery here in Berlin, yeah. So she developed a new concept for the place, and at the beginning of the project, the client went bankrupt, so the place uh, remained empty, yeah. So she fell so much in love with the concept and with the energy which she had developed in that place that she decided to quit her unbefristed, <laughs> so unlimited uh, uh, working contract, yeah, and taking the bold step to go as self-employed in gastro uh, sector, yeah, where she had no experience at all. But she said that place had such an energy that I want to try it myself. She said, I can always go back to work as an architect. Yeah, but yes, I want to give it a try. Yeah. So she opened this place in Renslauerbeck in Berlin, which is called Nona uh, uh, um, Cafe. Yeah, she is running now for the last five years. And um, she has at the moment, I think, seven employees. And you know she is going continuously through different challenges. So even the finance I'm is writing with the Kevere Storia and um, clients. Uh, um, I mean, updating always the menu. And her huge challenge is finding a, a manpower. No, so the personnel in the coffee. I mean, it is very hard in the gastro sector to find good people which want to work for you. And the concept of her place is also very much based on the service which you offer to your clients. And it's been a huge challenge for her. The funny thing is that she also is pregnant at the moment with her third child. And she has reasons every day to give up, really. Yeah. 
and she remains there. She remains uh, believing on herself and on the project and um, thinking on the clients who, uh, who go there and many senior people who live in the area go there. And uh, Nona means in, in Italian uh, grandma. And this is part also of the concept of her coffee. And she's so much motivated by her why that, uh, yeah, she keeps running Nona despite of the challenges which she has to face uh, in the moment and especially in the last year and a half. Ah, very cool. And it's like the, maybe this is also a good a good moment to uh, start turning more towards uh, Q&A from the audience. So if anyone of uh, you watching has specific questions, please use the app and A function if you have a German system or Q&A if you have an English system to ask questions. And here we have one that is uh, very tightly connected to this. Um, Rita asks, do you have any tips of how to keep up and maintain the resilience we face with lots of rejections during the way? So how can we handle that and maintain our motivation? Yeah. Um, I always like um, starting the process of uh, working with female founders with a why. I don't know, maybe um, you have heard of Simon Sinek, the Golden Cycle, and I recommend um, to the person who posted, it, uh, um, who posed the question, maybe to have a check on that, Simon Sinek, it's called the Golden uh, Circle. And his approach is that in any business should start with a why. Actually, there is this book, Start With Why. And I think this why gives you this example, which I uh, explained now no, about uh, Anna. Her why gives her the energy, it's a motor for her to keep doing. And when you are 100% convinced from your why, you always find the strength to move further. And of course, I always say like entrepreneurship is a, um, how you say in English, achterbahn? Um, um, roller, roller coaster. Yeah, okay. So when you're up, it's great, yeah, because you can almost touch the sky. But when you are here down, and so what gives you again, yeah, the strength and the energy to move up again? And in my case, my view, from my point of view, is this why which gives you the energy to keep moving and uh, no matter how many reactions you get to believe in yourself. And if I may share with you one personal experience on that, um, when I had the idea of uh, founding Fraunalia, then um, I remember to the first, um, I mean, stakeholder or a stakeholder donor, to whom I presented the project, um, and she told me categorically, no. Yeah, there is no money for that. There is no money for this target group. This target group are uh, women who are very good, very well educated. They have uh, educational uh, studies and we don't support that. Yeah, I, re I remember I was crying after that meeting and I said, no, there must be a way because I was totally convinced by the why and I saw the need. Yeah. and uh, also tested the need in a small scale. Uh, so that um, purpose, which I saw, then um, gave me the strength to keep moving further and to find other ways how to get the financing for Brown Alley. So I would invite you to maybe reflect on that and uh, yeah, finding out what is your why. Uh, I, I love. I I love that because it's the same. It's the same same thing that I um that I always say is kind of like if you're re really down, kind of like really down. It's like take a moment, step out, go for a walk, and reflect on your why. It's like why are you doing it? Why did you start it out in the first place? And um, is this still true now? Yes or no? And if it is still true for you, that and you can still finance it. Right. It's like there's obviously nobody wants that um, anyone is ending up with a huge, huge amount of debt. Um, at the end, you still have the belief, right? You said it's so nice. It's like there is there. I still think I'm on the right track. I still think there is demand for this. Um, then keep going. It's like a lot of the successful people have gotten successful because they didn't give up. It's like they went like the, that one more time. They kind of like stood up once more and made it made it happen. All of us have faced so many challenges. There is nothing that like a linear um, way to success. There just isn't um, any book that suggests that is wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. Yeah. 
it's wrong yeah yeah and then uh, maybe also mm -hmm. sorry i had this um, um naive idea at the beginning uh, thinking that ah oh, this is a phase with so many challenges i'm just looking forward to a, a quieter phase you know where i mean things go smoothly and after a couple of years being founder there is no such a quiet <laughs> <No>. <laughs> There isn't, there, right? There is always something, yeah? yeah? So maybe you sort it out one challenge and say, okay, now it's behind us. Then the next one is waiting for you at the corner. So <laughs> you have to get used to that. Exactly. And it's like, uh, I think that's also, that's the, the, you know, running running your own business is hard. It's not easy. It's like, I think everybody has to understand that that is definitely challenging. Um, and it will challenge you, but it offers you also a lot of uh, possibility for personal growth, right? So Absolutely. what we what we said in the beginning, right, of um, that you don't want to hit that glass ceiling is like you can take it at your pace, um, but you can take it also as far as you want. It's like the Absolutely. often often like the the what you have started out is is what you have started out with. That it's your decision if you keep doing on that or whether you want to explore something additionally on top of that, right? So it's not a, a, a a company or a business is not not a static thing you can always uh, change it so i think that's a really big opportunity absolutely i want to add kind of like a couple of um tactical tips um for resiliency uh, for rita um i hope the, those are going to be helpful my experience is also that um so the why that um that you said is like the strongest thing there's some tactical things that i think you can do additionally most of the time kind of like the if you're really kind of like down and face a lot of challenges it's usually a lot of challenges it's not one challenge it's many um that are basically that have built up uh, and it's it feels like it's too much that you can't solve them at the same time and often the good news is you don't have to solve them at the same time it's like you can take one problem at a time and start with the one that's easiest right and that may have the biggest impact um often if you look at them and write them down what is the really the problem it's like it makes it a lot more tangible and then you can do it like with running I like to run. So sometimes I feel not very strong. And it's like, should I go running? Yes or no? And so, okay, I'm going to go. And it's like one kilometer is better than none. Right. And so if you've run the first kilometer, I was like, yeah, it actually doesn't feel that bad. Right. And maybe I can get in a second. And then you're like, oh, I've already got second. It's better than nothing than staying at home. Right. And so you can start building up a little bit of that positive momentum again. Um, and you can reflect, you should reflect on every single one, right? It's like, like that after that kilometer, right? Oh, it's actually better than nothing. It's important that kind of like you start to feel that you're moving and making progress. Um, and that is one thing that has, uh, like among other things has worked very well for me about like, okay, I still believe like I have a strong why I have, um, I have a strong why. I still believe that it's true, but the challenges are still there. So actually going after them one by one um, and acknowledging that you can't do everything at the same time. And that's okay. And that's actually the best way to handle it is, uh, is, is something that tactically can really, can really help. Yeah. If I may add something, uh, Matt, because it's very much true what you said, but when we are alone facing the challenges, sometimes it's hard for you yeah, to make this priority and to get clarity. So if you feel in that position also, um, I mean, get in contact with uh, some mentors, some coach, which can give you in the process can be also very helpful. Yeah. And yep. not, nobody else can make any magic for you or can take over the challenges for you. Yeah. But can help you to create some other, yeah, to get some clarity in your mind in that moment and then also becoming more uh, connected to yourself and uh, kind of getting a kind of inner peace to say, okay, one thing after the other and how I get out of that. So also getting maybe the help of somebody, external person yeah. can also help at certain moments. Absolutely. Like there's, there's this, um, there's sometimes this wrong pride about like, I can't ask anyone. I've got to solve it myself. No, you don't. It's like there are other people and it actually is, uh, as can build amazing relationships, right. Can come out of this. So it's like, I, uh, absolutely. And it's like people generally like, especially self-employed are very willing to help. Um, again, it's like everyone, everyone has gone through this. Yeah. And uh, if you're part of a community, yeah, that's what we were speaking before. If you are part of a community and you have, uh, um, let's say nice network of people that you can rely on, 
then I would also invite you, I mean, get in contact with somebody in that community, in that network and ask, okay, I'm facing those challenges. Um, can, I mean, does anybody already have experience on this area or facing those challenges or how do you do it? I would be happy to have a talk with you. And as Matt before said, self-employed are very much open to support each other because I mean, we <laughs> go every day to things and we are very much happy to support them because I think it's part also of our attitude in this entrepreneurial path. Yeah, and also like, um, I'm, I wanna read out one co comment from uh, Zoraya. Hi Zoraya, good to see you here. Um, about strength, right? Strength, uh, other strengths of that you have, right? Kind of, and I'm gonna read like we, we've talked, touched a little bit on that, but I think it's really additive of uh, what Soraya has said. And it's like in these situations of challenges, right? It's like be make yourself aware of your strengths as well. And let me read this out. My opinion is to add to your point on the characteristics of the migrant founders is that we also have completely different mindset. So many things are much more difficult to be done achieved in the home country, so we work harder in general to make things happen. We do not think things, take things for granted. We also push boundaries of what can be done and what not. While in Germany, it is almost fixed. Some things cannot be done because it is basically a rule. Beautiful comment. Very and so. Very much so. can just put a yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Um, so maybe to, to close things off, and again, kind of like if there are any more questions, feel free to, to ask them to us. Like if you map out or if you think about what could happen to also empower this segment even more, what's necessary? I think that uh, um, we should keep working, as I said, should keep working because we are working on that, but I think we need more role models uh, Mate, that go on the public and uh, who can inspire um, other women to take the step. And at the same time, these role models have also a role of showing in our society and in our economy the strength and the potential of the target. So I think the, let's say, the role of these role models as a double impact or a double aim. First, yeah, inspiring women who are thinking, I have this idea, should I do that in business, in this, this business in Germany? Yes or not? And what you, speak, what you said before, uh, our family and friends, uh, they appreciate us and they love us, but they are not entrepreneurs. So in many occasions, they want with their best intention, intention, maybe they give us some advices which are maybe not that, uh, let's say, intelligent in that regard, or smart. Yeah. So um, that's why we need these role models of other women like you who already took that step and uh, who are having their business. And I'm not speaking about maybe one woman who is now after maybe eight years, yeah, having an income of 1 million euro. I'm speaking about exactly women like you and me, like maybe founded their business. What I said about Anna and so many hundreds of cases, which we know so of women who take their step and after three years, they are facing their challenges. And maybe they start as solopreneurs and after two or three years, they have a small team of two people and keep growing on their business. Yeah. So this kind of like let's say very close role models which can really inspire the woman. And as I said, the second uh, impact or aim of these role models is also to show in our society and economy the potential of the target. So I think this would be very much needed in order to keep supporting the international female founders in Germany. The good news is, I think that's beautifully said, and I think the good news is it's happening, right? It's okay. it's, it's really happening. And uh, also, thanks again for all the effort that you're doing with uh, Frau Nalia and also Sie Gründet, right, of offering this amazing community that they can connect, that they can see the role models, but that they can also connect to people who are very close to kind of like what they're doing, right? I think it's exactly as you say, it's like sometimes you don't need to actually somebody that has tens of millions of income or um sales right it's like it's it's too far away of even being, being reachable and they don't see the 10 15 years that have gone into it and actually get there and that they started out just you and uh, like like you and i about like just with an idea just about i want to get on that path and and have kind of like mastered their way 
but being somebody is like in a, in a fairly similar stage is um is probably more empowering um for that uh, for that person in that moment so thank you very much for uh, for doing that for connecting the people um, and for also showing um the role models um i think it's a hugely important work yeah, I would like also to thank you as well for your <laughs> great you also job with a self-employed a group in Germany, no matter if it's with or without a migrant background. I think it's also amazing what you are doing. And uh, it was a pleasure being here today. Super. Um and I here can you back. can you see my can you see my screen? It's on the process of sharing. Uh, uh hold on then. Maybe you can Click one more time. One second. It's probably because it's in full screen. Um, I want to pull up if you would want to get in touch with either of us. We've prepared some QR codes for you. Um, so here it is. Yeah. There it is, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, you can follow Siegründet on um, on Instagram and Frau Analia and um, of course also Jimdo and uh, myself. And uh, thank you very much for the participation. Um, thank you so much, Begonia, again for being here today and sharing all of your insights. I've truly enjoyed the conversation. And again, thanks for all the work uh, that you are doing. Um, have a good day, everyone. Thanks, Mate. Thanks for having me here and thanks for the talk. Bye-bye.